Good morning, everybody. Jan of Jan Hicks Creates here. I'm going to be um, coming at you with a couple different videos today. I got my lock scroll frames from Artisan Designs on Saturday. So I'm going to do a video on showing you how to use them as I figure out how to use them. So you know that is always good for a few laughs or a few of you saying, Jan, turn it around, turn it around. <laughs> There's always something. And I'm going to do a video um, repairing the hole in my linen. Now, um, I'm going to be using my new design, the the linen that has the hole in it to put on the lock scroll. So that's why these are kind of videos happening in conjunction with each other. I am going to make them into two separate videos though. So the people that are interested in one can watch one and people that are interested in the other can watch the other. Um, but they'll kind of be the same type of subject anyway. Well, the same linen at least. Um, so anyways, I am going to get you turned around and um, we'll start the sh fun and games. Yeah, stay tuned. Okay, so here we go. It's my new design. You can see I got some more progress done on it. It's looking a little blue in the, in the camera, but um, I'm loving, loving, loving how this is turning out. Anyway, that doesn't help me with the hole though. There it is. So I, first let me tell you that I got how to do this from um, a video from Nic Nicola Parkman of Hands Across the Sea. Um, it's one of her very early videos, I think number seven, but I will link that below so you can actually go right to the origin. I am just following her instructions and um, thought I would record my, um, my attempts here have my needle. I actually have this threaded. When I finished last night, I thread the needle um, so that when I pick this up today, I'd be ready to start, forgetting that I was going to do this video. So the first thing I need to do, and I, I need to do this before I put it on the lock scroll frame, right? Um, so that um, you know, I can reach the edges of the fabric because I have to pull some threads from the edge of the fabric to actually use for weaving in, um, weaving this hole shut. Um, I am putting this on the lock scroll instead of trying to do it in hand so that I can have a nice even tension across my fabric when I'm doing the weaving. So Nicola says that it is important whenever you are pulling your threads that you pull for the horizontal threads, you pull from the horizontal edge and for the vertical threads, you pull from the vertical edge. Now I do have one of my vertical edges is surged and one of my horizontal edges is the selvage. So um, I will be pulling from these other two edges. You can see I have, I did not sew these edges yet. Um, I have a lot of fraying here, but that is actually good because I'll just be able to pull a couple of these threads and hopefully, now some of these I think are gonna be too short um, to use. That might be long enough. Yeah, I think that'll be long enough. So that is, one of the horizontals and actually that one well I'm gonna make it longer I actually don't need to be holding on to my needle for this since there's so many frayed um, threads on the edge frayed with lots of cat fur already built in <laughs> so let me get one more from this edge all right I'm gonna take out a couple of these I'm sure either any of these are gonna be long enough I'm sure but I want to take them out and I'm going to put those aside, and I'll actually get them off of this table um, so that they're not lost in the shuffle when I'm, I'm playing with the lock scroll. Okay, now we're going to come over to the vertical edge, and again, lots of fraying going on here. So I'm just going to start pulling these. I think that one might be too short. That one, though, is plenty long enough, so I'm going to lay that vertically on the table. Let's see, this next one, 
I think that will be plenty long enough too. So again, those are gonna get laid there. Those are gonna be thrown away. My needle, I'm going to move down here in the middle. Okay, so that's the start of getting my hole taken care of. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the linen on the lock scroll. So I'm going to end this video and start another. Okay, kids. Are we ready? I think I'm ready. So the first thing that I will say that Nicola mentions is that don't attempt this right after you've discovered the hole when you might be frustrated and, and fed up and angry and whatever. Give yourself time to calm down and think about it and kind of process it before you dive right in. So I've done that. Um, I watched her video, which is very clear and, and concise. And so now I'm ready to give it a go. Like I said, I pulled out my threads earlier. I have two horizontal and two vertical. The first thing I need to do is pull back the threads that have been cut both ways and weave them under whatever nearby stitching there is. So these two I will be pulling back the whole way to here and weaving them under these stitches. And I don't know if there's a certain number of stitches they have to go under to be secure. Um, you know, this is what I have to work with, so that's what I'll use. So these vertical ones are going to go up here, these horizontal ones are going over here, and these vertical ones are coming down here. So I'm going to start working on that. Um, I will probably speed up this video, um, because this isn't the the funnest thing to watch in the world. Okay, I'm going to leave that there for when I turn it over, let me move this down here, um, you can see this, this linen thread, I'm going to pull down, I'm going to leave both of these where they are and then when I get the other ones done I'll turn it over and pull those down through and um, secure them in the stitching. So that's those two. Turn this a little bit, get the threads out of the way so I don't confuse which is horizontal and which is vertical. Get back on camera. Yes, this is a little bit unnerving. I am a knitter who has steeked her knitting, so this isn't the scariest thing I've ever done with one of my crafts. For those that might not be familiar, steeking means to cut into your knitting. Basically, you do that whenever you want to add a like a button band to a sweater you knit in the round and then cut your circle and pick up stitches to create a button band. So cutting your knitting is a lot more unnerving than this, although you do things while you're knitting to make sure that your knitting doesn't unravel. And I'm not real worried that this is going to unravel. <laughs> but it is still, until it's done, it is still a little unnerving. Now, Nicola showed a piece that she had done, had to do this too. It did have a hole in it. It was a sampler, of course. All right, that stops there. And um, she repaired it 
finished the stitching, entered it into a show, and it won best in show. So, and it, it you couldn't you couldn't tell with this method you cannot tell if it's done properly. You cannot tell where the repair is. So that is what I'm hoping for. Oops, I split that linen thread in half. I need to have a balance between being able to see it myself and have it where you can see it. I'm sitting here by my big window in our, at our kitchen table. So I don't have my task lighting, but I do have all the light coming in from outside. Having trouble grabbing that one so close to the stitching. I don't want to disrupt the stitching. Okay, there's that one. And I think that's the thing that makes it the most unnerving is that this stitching is all around it. And like I said, I'm not, that, that's like such a little piece there. That's gonna be, um, well, all of these are little tiny threads. It's gonna be interesting getting them into the needle. I need to get one of my other little tools, don't I? I guess if you've done drawn thread type of work, this probably isn't quite as intimidating. One thing I really want to learn how to do is, um, that I haven't done yet, is hem stitching. I've read a couple tutorials. There's a couple of my samplers, well, samplers and other little things here that I would like to frame as hem stitch pieces. Just haven't gotten around to doing that yet. But for hem stitching, you have to draw some threads out. Alrighty, so I have this turned over to the back. Now I have to pull the threads down to the back. That's the one that got a little frayed. I believe I have it all. I'll have to check. Trying to find the thread, I think, is <laughs> with this other, with my stitched threads here is, again, just, you know, I don't know where it's supposed to go. That is that one. Shoot, where is the other thread? <laughs> All right, there we go. 
All right, so now I just have to weave these under the stitching. And I think I'm going to do that off camera because it's going to take some strange angles of the um, scroll rods to do this as I have to tilt it up and get a better angle. So I will be right back. Okay, I've been flipping the scroll frame, the rods this way and that, trying to get this at an angle so that I can work with it, but so that you can also watch me do one of these. fuzzy with my hand there so I'm gonna back it up a bit okay so I'm sure there are better tools for this I'm sure there's something else out there that I should have but I don't for threading like this with these little tiny tails but I just got out my one of my old needle threaders and I've placed my working needle underneath the threads that I want to pull it under then I put my, my, uh, I actually want to have, this is the thread I want to work with right here. And I want that down below my um, needle threader. So I'm going to put that through there. Get this down below. See, I need more hands. I keep going off screen. I hope you'll forgive me for that. This is not an easy process. Okay, so basically, I want it showing through the hole in the needle threader. I want to make sure I'm just doing one at a time so you get out of there. I'm going to use another needle to just pull that up through the eye of the needle threader. And then pull it through my working needle. Then I'm going to take my other needle again. It's pulled it a little bit too far into the eye for me because I want it to be easier to pull through the threads. And then I just pull it down through. Okay, there's one. Do that again. So I'm going to do this one here. So thread it under my stitching and again I don't know how many threads I need to catch it under there's not a whole lot of stitching right in this area but three or so is gonna have to do because that's what I have here whoops don't go the whole way through get my needle threader put it through the eye and again I want the thread I'm weaving through to be down underneath the needle threader Put it through the eye of my working needle. Come on. Get my other needle. And just pull that up through. Pull it back through my working needle. Pull it out a little bit so there's some room to, to maneuver. pull it through the stitches. All right, so you'll notice that when I pull it through, do you see how it's creating an opening here in the linen? I'm going to have to pull it back some so there isn't a noticeable gap, so it's not pulling at the linen. And the same over here. I left that over here on this side because I need to pull the, the threads back a little bit so it's not pulling the linen out of shape. Okay, so that's those vertical ones or horizontal ones. I'm sorry. I'm going to now do the vertical ones off camera. All right, so there we have it. The threads are all pulled back and woven in, and now it is time to do the reweaving. I don't think it matters what we start with, so I'm just going to start with one of the horizontal ones. Now, the tricky part about this, of course, is making sure you 
keep consistent with the rest of the weave. So hopefully I can do that. Nicola suggested that you start with a away waist knot. So that's basically what I'm doing. I don't usually put the knot in it though. Here we go. So I'm just gonna start down over here somewhere and come up where we left off. Okay, so keeping with the weaving, that means I'm going under that one. Feel like I'm off already. <laughs> over. Yeah, that one definitely is over. Over. Under. Over. All right, because that one is over, so this one has to be under. Okay, yep. it through here. Oh, that one is under. Okay, making sure I'm staying on course. Over, under, over, under, over, under, over. And then on this side, one is over, so this has to be under, over, under. All right, so. She did mention that, that linen will, f will fuzz up and fray so not to worry too much about that. That one was under, so this is over. Whoops, I lost track. That one was under. The last one was under, right? Yep. So, over, under. Okay, that's a linen thread there, under, over. And I'm, I'm hesitating because that looks like it's an over there, but that's because when I, I put it down through, I wrapped it around. All right, so we're gonna pull that through. So I wrapped it around the linen thread before, so that's going to be a little bit of a flub there because I'm not taking that back out but that is one linen thread done and it does move fairly easily I'm going to pull that back so there's a longer tail on this side to help me weave it in and I'm going to stick my thread up through over here just the tail and I'm not going to mess with that just yet okay one horizontal thread done time for horizontal thread number two so again, I'm just going to poke it down over here somewhere so it's out of the way and come up. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to come up here. place here. Grr. So 
I need to go over the first one. Okay, that's better. Throw one over. Under. I think you get the idea, so I'm going to speed this part up now. One of the things that she does mention is that you want to make sure, can you see how this thread kind of twisted a little bit here? That's going to cause kind of a noticeable little lump, so you want to really make sure that you can work that out. And that seemed, just pulling it out a little bit seems to have helped quite a bit. Okay. All right, other side of the hole then. Getting a little bit harder to maneuver here on the threads. And of course this is 40 counts, so it's a little bit less room to maneuver. Sorry, I went off screen. Sorry about that. I needed to be able to see. Sorry. All right, I think I've come to where I caught the other thread under, or the old thread under. So there is the two horizontal ones in place. This might be a little bit harder to reconcile with the other threads because of the hand dyed, since it is hand dyed fabric. Hadn't thought about that, but that's okay. I'm not entering this in a show. <laughs> okay, so there is that one, both the horizontal threads. Pull that back out a little bit. Not terrible. I mean, I think it might just end up looking like one of the, you know, like slugs, one of the thicker parts of the linen, kind of like, you know, you have lines that tend to stand out more in some places than others. All right, so now the vertical threads. One, two. Turn my scroll rod the other way so I have a better angle. And you can see down here, I think that might be where I pulled it a little bit, but this one down here already is looking kind of weird down there. Um, so yeah, not going to be perfect, but it will be better than a hole, right? So I'm going to pull that down through. Let's see where I need to come up at. Scroll rods are a little bit more unwieldy in this direction, so forgive me if I get to some strange angles here. All right, so that is a linen thread there. I don't need to do that one. Let's see, this one is under... So I'm going to go over here. Oh boy, this thread's a little short. Over, under. 
under, over, under, under. All right, I think you get the drift. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this back up again. I wasn't off camera for all of that. I was pretty intense on that one. So, <laughs> all right. So, there we have our hole is gone. It's not perfect as far as far as the not being able to see the line. And I think part of that, I mean, besides the dye job, um, you know, you have, you get this other one, you have the kinks in the fabric, right, from where it was woven in before. And I don't know whether, especially with hand-dyed fabric, I don't know whether it's possible to get those kind of kinks to, to line up, you know, where you would want them to be. But, um, I think that's probably as good as I'm going to get it. And like I said, at least the hole is gone. And I think, I mean, I really think the vertical ones are, are looking pretty good. It's just that one of the horizontal that um, I can notice now, but I think probably over time, let me get my needle back out here. Um, over time and once it gets you know, once I'm handling it more, um, hopefully it'll blend in more. Okay, so now I need to weave in these ends on the back and I'll be done. Now this, this the fact that this kind of affected this down below here is disturbing me a bit, but not much I can do about it. All right. So, I don't know whether I weave, want to weave these in in the same places as the other ones, but nothing special to this, just weaving it under other stitching just like normal 
So I will get this done and I will be right back. And there you have it. Hole, no hole. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. Is it better than having a hole? It most certainly is. And if you're looking at it from far away and you know it's there, yeah, you can kind of see it. But hopefully over time, like I said, it will all kind of blend together. All right, guys, I hope you found that useful. As I said, I will be linking Nicola's um, video down below so that you can see how the experts do it. I'm just a newbie when it comes to something like this, but I am quite pleased and quite relieved. So until later in the week when I will have my regular floss tube video, you guys take care and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.